Okay. So, uh, thank you again for joining uh, this morning or this afternoon, depending on where you are calling from. So, the first question that I always uh, like to ask is why are we here? So, why are we discussing why we should create uh, a second income stream? And uh, for me, the answer goes back to 2014. Uh, there was a downturn in the economy and people were losing their jobs. Uh, I, my industry is uh, in the oil and gas sector of the economy. People were losing their jobs. I saw firsthand how hard working people uh, were losing their jobs. So that's got me thinking that in this country, there is no such thing as job security. So, of course, it puts the responsibility on us as individual to find ways to secure our future. And of course, how do we do this? By making sure that at least we can provide for ourselves and take care of our families. And this, this thought was what led me to creating this course and running this webinar on how to create your second income stream. And if we also look at it right now with the old uh, pandemic uh, that's uh, happened all over the world, many people here in America, especially they lost their jobs. Millions of people were out of jobs as a result of this pandemic. There are two ways to look at situation in life. Uh, we can either act as a victim or step up and take responsibility. My message is always uh, to, my message to people is always to try as much as possible to step up and take responsibility. Because if you look at it uh, with the whole economic shakedown, uh, if you look at the top 1%, I'm talking about the billionaires, during the past, six to nine months, they saw their wealth go up by hundreds of billions of dollars. Meanwhile, the people at the bottom end of the chain, uh, they saw their wealth shrunk uh, during this period. So the question now is, should we be jealous of them or should we also find ways of creating our own wealth? And that's my message. How you, can you create your own wealth? So I'm going to be running through my slide and uh, I'll be talking about it and sharing uh, experiences with you, sharing my own knowledge uh, with you so that on your own, you can go back and do something and build your second income stream. So my agenda, the agenda that we'll be going through today, uh, it's quite simple. The first thing is uh, we'll be talking about the why. Why do we need to create uh, a second income stream? Then we'll talk about the challenges. What are the challenges uh, that people we face if they are uh, on a quest to create their own second income stream? And what are those challenges that are preventing people from even stepping up and taking the necessary steps to uh, do what they need to do in order to build a second income stream. We will also talk about how to find your niche. What do you need to do in order to create your niche? And I'm gonna be sharing business ideas that anyone can start so that you can start generating steady uh, income stream. And of course, I, I love to motivate people the final thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to motivate you so that you'll be able to take concrete step forward and start building your uh, passive income or side income as the case may be. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to go into it. So like I said, uh, if we don't know the why of something, then it becomes difficult to fully understand or appreciate uh, the thing. So why, why do we need a second income stream? For some, it may be just to make sure that you have income supplements. Income supplements in terms of maybe you earn $2,000 every month, but to live your life the way you want, maybe 
the ideal salary would be $2,500, that's $2,500. So definitely you need uh, a side income, a second income stream to supplement your main income. So that may be the reason for some people. For some other, it may be so that they will be able to manage their time and, uh, and be on top of their game. So they want flexibility. For some other, their own reason may be uh, so that they can get out of rat race. When I talk about rat race, what I mean by this is if you live paycheck to paycheck, uh, if you are always waiting to get the next salary, uh, that's you live paycheck to paycheck. And unfortunately, that's the situation for most people uh, around the world today. We, we all depend on that salary and as soon as we get it, maybe on the first day of the month, by the 20th of the month, uh, the salary is already running low. And if you live here in America, maybe at that point, you are already looking at uh, going uh, to borrow money, maybe uh, from your credit card. So uh, these are the why uh, that I think people need to supplement uh, their income and start building a second uh, income source. So that's the why. But before we really go into how to do it, there are some false beliefs uh, that I want to uh, debunk uh, this morning. If care is not taken, we will believe in this false belief. And uh, these are the beliefs that set us back, that put that hold us down and prevent us from actually taking steps to uh, fulfill our dreams about uh, building a passive income source. So the first thing that, I, that comes to my mind is uh, people believe that I can't achieve financial freedom. If you believe this, then there is no need to try. I want to let you know that you can do it. You can achieve financial freedom. It only takes careful planning for you to get there. And I'm gonna be, as we move forward, I'm gonna be sharing steps that you need to take so that you can get to that place of financial freedom, whatever it is for you. Some people believe that money is a limited resource. This is not the case at all. And I'm also gonna debunk this. They believe that, oh, if this is the highest amount that I can make. Maybe your salary today is $3,000. If you believe that you cannot attract more money than that, that means you have, uh, you have scarcity mentality and we need to deal with this uh, kind of mentality. Some people believe that money is evil. This is a wrong interpretation of the Bible. The Bible says um, the, the love of money is the root of all evil. Money itself is not evil. As a matter of fact, I know Robert Kiyosaki said, the lack of money is evil. The lack of money is why people do things that they wouldn't ordinarily have done. So money is not evil. There's no evil with money. It depends on what you are doing with your money. So money is not evil. The final false belief that I want to debunk here is that some people believe that it takes money to make money. If you put that as, uh, if you believe that, that means if you don't have enough, you, you will think that you cannot make more money. And this is not the case. Again, in this uh, webinar, I'm gonna be going through steps that you can take at, uh, so that you can, uh, make more money. So these are the false beliefs that people be, uh, take, uh, people used to, that people follow. And I want you to know that you can easily debunk all these beliefs. The last one I said, uh, some people believe it takes money to make money. And I have these great stories about people that started with nothing and they went on to achieve greatness. The first one is this guy, Jan Kuhn. Uh, he started uh, WhatsApp. Uh, WhatsApp got acquired by Facebook and today he is a billionaire. He, he started from nothing. He was born into a poor household, but he did not let the uh, mentality or the belief of uh, it takes money to make money stop him. He went on, he created something 
and out of that, what and out of what he created, he became a billionaire. So that's one. The second one is Oprah Winfrey. I know we all know Oprah. She is a billionaire today, but uh, she also started with nothing. The reason why I'm showing this is for so that you will know that you can start from where you are today and go ahead and build something and leave a legacy for your uh, for up the upcoming generation. I like this quote by George Bernard Shaw. It says, don't wait for opportunity. You should create it. And that's the goal of this uh, webinar today. I want people to think and know, and I want people to create their own opportunity. So uh, we need to create opportunity here. So I have more people join. So we can all create our opportunity. That's the message here. I'm going to move on. Now, I came from Nigeria. Before I came to this country, I, I was under the belief that there is something called job security. But uh, these days with technology, with innovation, I've come to realize that there is nothing as such. There is no job security. Because we, now that we know that there is nothing like job security, it is left to us as individuals to find a way to secure our future financially. And look at the charts on, on the screen. Uh, these are people in their 50s that, got, uh, that were involuntarily separated from their job. The simple thing is that the simple message here is they were let go. Imagine you at age 50 and you've been working in a company, you've been enjoying your job in that company, and they let you go. Imagine how painful or how disappointing that can be. And look at the screen, at least one person, at least one in, uh, in this chat, about 70% of people said they, had, they, uh, they were laid off uh, during their career especially after age 50, about 70% of people, they experience one layoff. If you look further, about 20% of people, they experience two, they were laid off like twice after age 50. About maybe 5% experience more than three layoffs. This is not good. If you depend on your salary, if you depend on just one source of income and you were asked to go, this is gonna jeopardize your plan. This is gonna mess you up. So we need to talk about how to create a second income stream because there is no such thing as job security anymore. This is also a chart uh, and this is by year. Uh, in 2014, about 50% of the workforce were, uh, that were percentage of retirees who were forced to partly percentage of retirees who were forced to retire. They are almost at their retirement age, but they were not ready to retire, but maybe due to economy or maybe due to some reason by their company, they were forced to go. So there is no such thing as job security. Much more than job security is the fact that we all need to be happy with what we do. And if you look at job satisfaction in America, only 59% of people that earn more than $75,000 are satisfied with their job. Imagine that, that means about 41% of people, they are not satisfied. But guess what? They still have to work because they need to make ends meet. I don't want this to be your case. I want people to go to work, not, because, not only because they need to make money, but also because they love the challenges also because they enjoy what they do. And that's the message. People that earn less than $30,000 per annum, only 39% of them are satisfied with their job. This is not a good statistic. That shows that about 61% of people that earns less than, uh, than $30,000 were not satisfied with their job. This shouldn't be the case. So now let's go to the real deal. We all need to create a second income stream. 
the deal now is how do we do it? But before we go into the how, I would like to talk about the challenges. Why is it that people don't focus on this? Why is it that more people are not creating their second income stream? The first thing is that most people don't have the idea of what to do. You may be thinking, oh, it's easy. Let me just go into, into any business. But you need an idea. Some people said they don't have an idea of how to start. Some people know what to do, but they, they, they are experiencing what I call information overload. They have too many things coming at them, and they are not sure of how to streamline the whole information, how to break the information down and focus on one. And that's a, another challenge. And the other the, the type of challenge that people often experience is lack of motivation. Lack of motivation in the sense that maybe they have this um, satisfaction with their job, or maybe they, maybe they have uh, the sense of security with their job. But from the chart that I showed, there's no such thing as job security. Again, it is left to everyone to find a way to generate a passive income or side income. So these are the challenges that people reported that they face. When you think about people that said, oh, they don't have idea of what to start. And I'm, I'm showing this screen. There are a lot of businesses out there. You can become a career coach. You can do Photoshop editing. People can deliver with Uber or Dash and make money. You can become a social media marketer. You can become a music instruct instructor or go into child care. The, the issue wasn't the lack of idea. It's not the lack of idea at all. But what we need to focus on is what can you do that you enjoy and will also bring you money. So that's what we all need to focus on and ask ourselves, what can I do that I enjoy and will bring, him, and will bring me money? And this will take me to my podcast. I started uh, in 2018, I, uh, 29, yeah, 2018, I started creating a podcast. Initially I was, okay, let me just start uh, expressing my views, sharing my opinion with people. Uh, I did not know how to do it. I did not know how to grow it, but I had a passion for creating podcasts. And today, uh, at least in the United States here, over uh, my podcast is being listened to in over 30 states in the, in the US and over 25 countries all around the world. And how did I get this result? It's mainly because I took the step. It's not alone. It's not enough to have the idea, but you must be willing to take the step to move forward with your idea. And that's part of what we are going to be discussing today. Now you have the idea. The next question you may need to ask yourself is, what path should I follow? These are four questions or four areas that I want us to really, really focus on. Where to start from? Because we, I threw out all forms of business idea in the last uh, slide. Where do I start from? How do I start? These are the questions that may be going on in your mind. And what's the proof that this idea will generate money? And how can I scale it so that it will be a consistent flow of income? And I'm gonna uh, show you or tell you how you can actually do this. The first thing that we need to do here is you should know your skills. The way I want you to think about this is identify your top three skills. What are those things that you enjoy doing? Identify them. And the next thing that you should do is explore what is already working. Let's say, for example, uh, I spoke about my podcast. If you like creating podcasts, or maybe you, your case is you like, you know how to use graphic design. You know how to design websites. Can you convert that idea into a business? So choose your top three skills. Maybe if, again, you know how to design a website. That's your number one skill. Explore what is already working. How can you talk to people and show them that, hey, I know how to design websites. 
and get them to dip their hands in their pockets and pay you to design their website. That's the next challenge. And how can you scale through this challenge? One proven way is to rely on mentors. Look in your network. Look at people that are already doing what you are doing or people that have experience in the areas that you want to go into. Go to them, talk to them, get them to mentor you, get them to guide you so that you can also start your business. That's the path to go. And hey, it's not only about just having ideas and knowing what to do. Until you actually take the step and do it, you are not going to see any results. So the next step now is to do it. I like the way Nike put it, do it, just do it. So many people think, many people, they go into analysis paralysis. They go into what will not work and they neglect what will work. Here, I don't want you to overthink it. Pick your top three idea, uh, skills, find one that you want to focus on. Again, I gave an example of website building, focus on it, talk to people, Put yourself online so that more people will be able to know what you are doing. And when you put yourself online, that's the way people will know what you are doing and they will be able to patronize you and uh, have business and do business with you. So that's the way to get this started. I'm gonna go into the next slide. I know you may be thinking, how can I know the exact thing that I need to do? And that's why I created this uh, particular slide, finding your niche. The purpose of this slide is to help you, is to reinforce the previous slide. Again, I'm putting five simple steps that you can take to start your business. The first thing is identify your interests and skills. What do you like doing? That's your, skill, that's your interest. Do you have skills for it? Again, let's say I, I, I want to design website. If I don't have the skills of uh, website design, then there's no way uh, I'll be able to turn it into uh, any business. Yes, I know I can go out and learn, but because I want people to start uh, within the next two, three months, maybe you, there may be no time to start learning. So identify your skills. What, do, what are you good at? And turn that passion into profit. The number two thing that we need to do is find a problem areas. If you look at human race, there are a lot of problems that we all face. There are problems about housing, there are problems in transportation, there are problems in people looking for a career, there are problems with people even knowing how to balance their budgets. You may not believe that, but there are people that struggle to balance their budgets. Find a problem area. Oh, there are problems in relationship. Some people need uh, relationship experts to coach them, to guide them. So find a problem area that you are passionate about. The next step, you should research the market. This idea that you are passionate about, can you turn it into a business? That's always a question you, you should ask yourself. And number four, determine profitability. I do not want you to waste your time. I want you to make profit with what you are doing. So you need to determine this thing that I want to do, is it going to be profitable at the end of the day? So you need to determine profitability. And finally, test your idea. See, most people don't act because uh, they keep saying, oh, they want perfect solutions. They want everything to be perfect. And as such, they will fail to take the, step, the necessary step to move forward. So I'm telling you, you need to test your idea so that you can move forward. So those are the ways you can find your niche and build your business. Now let's go to getting started. I've categorized uh, businesses into five main groups. The first one is physical products. The next one is real estate. The third one, coaching. The fourth one, online courses. And the number fifth one is capital markets. I'm quickly gonna run through it 
so that we'll be able to leave some time for question and answer. So when, when I think or talk about physical products, uh, the easiest one that comes to mind is Amazon. I know there are people today that are making millions on Amazon. If you, if at all you are interested in selling products, if you want to, if you are the type that like to go out there, buy certain products and uh, add some premium so that you can sell it, then you should definitely consider selling on Amazon. And the way to do it is you look for price differential. Let's say you go to Walmart or Walmart or Target, you can buy an item for $10. And if you go on Amazon, the same item will cost you $12 or $15. That's the price differential. You can mark it up and sell. The good thing about Amazon is that they will do the fulfillment for you. So you look for price differential and also sell your item. Like this uh, vacuum cleaner on Best, in, on Best Buy website is $349. But on Amazon, it's $489. If you do the difference, that's $140 different. But before you try to go into any business, there are also items that you need to be sure. How many people are buying the items? If you see the rating of 20, I mean, that tells you that maybe not many people are interested in that item. So there's a way you need to look at how many, what's the volume of sales? And if you go on Google, uh, Amazon, you can see the top selling products on Amazon. All you need to do is go somewhere else, go to any brick and mortar store and see if you can get the same item cheaper and then sell on Amazon. So if you, if at all you are interested in selling products, definitely you should consider Amazon. The other platform that I have that I'll uh, advise people to consider today uh, would be uh, Etsy. Uh, this platform, Etsy or Shopify, they also uh, provide the platform for people to come in and market their products. So if you are interested in selling products, definitely you should consider those uh, platforms. If you are interested in real estate, this will take time. But uh, the name of the game is patient. If you are patient enough, at the end of the day, you will see results. The way this works is, and I learned this uh, through about Kiyosaki, four green houses equal to one hotel. The first house is always the hardest. Let's say you buy, let's say you are interested in buying a $100,000 uh, apartment. And of course, you want to put down 20% down payments. With your 20% down payment, that's maybe about 20K on a $100,000 house. All you need to do is save $20,000. And it depends on how fast you can save it. Maybe you can only save $5,000 every year. At the end of the fourth year, you'll be able to buy the first property. But guess what? It gets easier because your first property you started creating money from your first property. Let's say you are generating $200 per month. That's after taking out your, uh, all your expenses. You'll be left with, uh, every year you now have $2,400. Again, you continue to save money, right? And now you have income coming from your property. If you are disciplined enough and you are not spending this money, Guess how long it will take you to buy your next property, maybe for the same rate of $100,000. Within three years, you'll be, you'll be ready to buy your next property because now you are combining the income from your first property with the $5,000 that you are saving every year. Within 10 years, you'll be able to buy four properties. And that's the calculation that I made. It, but guess what? Maybe after the 10th year, you may decide to scale up and just maybe at that point, you'll be able to buy property almost every year because income will be coming from four different properties now, not just one. You are getting income from four properties. 
Many people don't do this because it takes time, it takes discipline, it takes focus, it takes consistency, and it's challenging. So that's why most people don't do this. But if this is your passion, if you like dealing with tenants, if you don't mind asking questions, if you don't mind getting caught that, hey, something is broken, then maybe this is a path that you can follow. Now, let's go into coaching. If you don't like selling products, if you don't like dealing with tenants, if at all you have any skills, you can become a coach. And how can, how can you do that? You can become a career coach, a financial coach, health coach, or relationship coach. And what you do is set up a platform, a website. All you need is to have a knowledge about something. For example, I myself, uh, I know that I'm passionate about finances and business. And I went, I, I became a financial education instructor so that I can help other people. Excuse me. So that I can help other people with their, when it comes to financial subjects. So if there's anything that you are good at, you can actually become a coach and teach other people. That's the message there. <coughs> This is perhaps the best one, online business. Online business because if you look at the world that we have today, technology has made it easy for many people to get online. Billions of people get online every day in search of something. If you can create an online business, there will be people that will be looking for solutions and they will be attracted to your business. Here's a lady that worked for me uh, to edit my last book. I reached out to her because I have another book that is coming up. And can you imagine, she, she explained that she's booked all through till next year. And this is, how did she do it? She's a book editor. She offers her service. And on Upwork, she just put her profile there. That's an online business. If you go on this website, if there's anything at all, I, I love using, I'm gonna switch this, uh, I'm gonna quickly switch my slide. I love Fiverr uh, because I do business on Fiverr. I, 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 I hire people to do stuff for me. If you have any skills at all, whether it's in graphic design uh, you know how to make logo, you know how to make business card, or you know how to do a illustration, put yourself out there, go on Fiverr, create your pro profile. If you know about digital marketing, if you know about SEO, video marketing, email marketing, put yourself out there. This world as the, the technology and uh, the gig economy has made it easy for anybody to just put information out there and you'll be able to attract other people that are looking for services that you offer. So you need an online presence. That's what I'm saying here. So Fiverr is a great example. If you have any skills at all, you can market, even if it's Excel, if you know how to make Excel or Word, if you are proficient in Word document, get yourself on Fiverr and you'll be able to market your skills. So continue with this. Here's my own book sales uh, on Amazon. Uh, and sometimes every month at least I sell five to 10 books. And these are people that I don't even know, but because my book is online, people go there, they purchase the book. So maybe at the end of each month, even if it's $20, that's passive income coming in that I, I did not even uh, work too hard for. So the message is you need an online presence. If you love teaching, if you are like me and you love teaching, the other way to make money is you should teach. I created a course that I titled Time Management for Working Professional. And this company, they call them uh, Tabletwise, they found my course and they reached out to me that, hey, 
we have this platform for 60 million people. And we, can you offer your course to students on our platform? And how did I get this? Because I created something. If there is any skill at all that you have, you can create something and people will buy from you. And this will take me to Udemy because there are other platforms like Thinkable, Udemy, Thinkific. They all have platform now that you can get on and also market your skills. Here is one. Uh, this is you. This is Udemy. And here is somebody. He has over one million students. This guy, he knows how to, uh, of course, uh, Python. This is programming. And he's selling his service online. Even if you don't know how to do that, if you can play piano, convert it into a course, you'll be able to teach people. Look at this. This person has over 200,000 students. And it's, he or she is teaching them how to play piano. Uh, if you are not into piano, this person is teaching guitar. All you need to do is record yourself, play some keynotes, and put it on online, and people will look for you. So that's the message right there. If you cannot, we, you need an online presence. You, you can teach and make money in the process. We all have skills. You just need to bring out your skills. You need to express your skills and turn your passion into profit. Here's another platform that reached out to me. This one they call them Listenable. Uh, and of course, they found me because of the total time management course that I created on Skillshare. Uh, again, this one, they want audio courses. If there's anything you know at all, how to dance, how to play music, how to walk a dog, or how to train a dog, just put it out there. People will find you and they will buy your service. Now, the final one that I'll quickly talk about is the capital market. For me, this is perhaps the easiest way. All you need to do is find a reliable company and start investing in those companies. You can own a piece of those companies. For example, if you shop at Walmart, if you look at Walmart, people are going in and coming out every day. You, maybe you are a customer at Walmart as, uh, as well. You can become an owner, not just a consumer, by buying shares in, in Walmart. Or go, to, go on Amazon. Billions of people are, go, uh, visit Amazon website every month. As Amazon is making money, you are also making money. Chase Bank, Facebook, billions of people go on Facebook every day. If you buy shares in Facebook, you are also becoming owner. And as Facebook become more profitable, you are gonna be receiving dividend income. If you feel it's risky to buy individual stocks, then you can consider buying ETFs or mutual funds. Mutual funds are a combination of different stocks that they've put together. The way this works is that look for any mutual fund that pays dividend and you'll be able to be making money every month. And that's the way to actually build side income. And that's the best one that I find because it's a passive income. All you need to do is make your money work for you. You will not have to sell products. You will not have to deal with tenants. You will not need to create content, but your money is working actively for you by investing in the capital market. Now, here's the fun part. When we talk about success or making money, people want overnight results. But the truth is success is steady progress towards one's personal goal, according to Jim Rohn. You may think that, oh, how will I start? When will I start seeing results? But what I want you to focus on is if you can create $100 side income within the next three months, you should take that as success. That's if you are starting from zero today. But if you're already making side income, then you need to think about how to scale it. So don't think that I'm not, my message is not about overnight success. I'm not telling you to bring out money from your pocket today and you start making money tomorrow. No, but my message is about consistency, 
It's about how to build long-lasting wealth through careful planning. So that's what my message is all about. I'm, I'm attracted to these. They said an average millionaire have seven streams of income, while the middle class have only one, and that's their job. If you want to build a financially secure future, then you need to break off from having just one source of income. Because hey, if anything should happen to your one source of income, then you'll be out of money. But guess what? If you start building uh, side income, at least you'll be able to get make money from other streams. And that's the message here. You should start creating your own side income. I, I, I've been thinking about this for a while now, and I created something called Four for Wealth. I'm helping people to identify four sources of income so that they can build wealth. Again, average millionaire has seven, but if you can have four, that's awesome. For me, here's the way mine look like. The first one is the regular income. And I, today I still make most of my income from my regular income as an engineer. The other one is uh, I make money from book royalty. I get quarterly uh, royalty from my book. Uh, podcasts that I create, uh, I, now I have thousands of people downloading my podcast every month and I make money when people listen to my podcast. I've started creating digital courses so that at least I'll put, put them online so that other people will buy my course. I also have a rental income. Uh, that's also generating another source of income for me. And most, uh, the last one is the dividend income that I make from uh, stock ownership. If you can create one or two, you should definitely consider maybe passive income. Maybe if you can buy shares or in any company and start using it to build your wealth. The way I look at financial freedom is, I, I consider it to be a ladder. Maybe today you're on zero level. You only depend on your uh, regular income. You should start thinking of how to get to $100 per month in income passive income. Then someday you should start, you should expand it so that you get to 10%. If you can get 10% of your income coming, let's say you earn $5,000 per month, but if you have $500 passive income, that's 10%. Someday if you continue this way, you'll be able to build passive income that will be, that will be able to replace 100% of your active income. And that's the way to get to financial freedom. I like the way Robert Kiyosaki put it. He said he who makes $25,000 annually through passive income is more enviable than he who earns $100,000 annually through a salary. So if you can find a way to create passive income, the way to do it is just scale it. Let's say year one, you start with, uh, you are making $100. By the time you get to year three, you'll be, you'll be able to increase that to $500, $1,000. And the way to do it is through consistency, through focus, and through careful planning. And this is the last slide that I have today. Uh, it's a recap, an action plan. Everything that I've spoken about today, I want you to convert everything to action. The first thing is pick an idea. What do you want to do that will be able to create money for you? So pick an idea. First month, take your time, think about it, maybe in December, pick an idea. Second month, you should start working the idea. Do you want to make money through uh, dividend income, real estate? or maybe by building your own online business, you should work the idea. Working the idea means putting plans in paper and doing something about it. And the third month, make money. We need to make money because if you make money, 
that shows you that your plans are working. If you are not making money from your plans, you can go back, revisit it, pick another idea, and go through the same motion until you start making money. If you look at what Robert Kiyosaki said uh, that I showed in the last slide, if you are working actively for someone and you are making money, that's great, that's commendable. But if you can create something yourself or if you can deploy your money to make money for you, that's even better. And that's my message. You should find a way to make money work for you. This is where I'm gonna end it. And I'm gonna open uh, this up for any question or conversation. If you have question, uh, please feel free to ask. You can unmute yourself and ask me questions. Okay, so uh, if there are no questions, the next step is who is committed to action? Who wants to do something about what they've, what they've heard so far? You can, because listening and uh, knowing all the information is not uh, the ultimate. The ultimate thing is to take step and do something about it. And I wish you the best. Thank you very much for joining me today. Uh, till next time again, uh, take care.